Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. Now it's time to convert what we've learnt into our first simple line following program. Here's what the program will look like when we're finished. The robot will crawl its way along, touching the left hand side of the black line, zigging and zagging as it makes its way forward. It won't quite be good enough to navigate the complicated tiles, or to stop and find the can. The program will only work on the simple tiles, the straight line, the sweeping 90 degree bend, and the gentle zigzag. Let's start by talking through the algorithm. With the robot placed on the rescue course, it's going to move gently to the right until it sees the black line. It will then move to the left until it sees the white line. We're going to run motor, we're going to run the left hand motor until it sees black. We're going to run the right hand motor until it sees white. This program is probably going to be more complex than anything we've written before. So you'll find a worksheet to help you get started on the Club Engineer website where you're viewing this tutorial. Download and print the worksheet so we can use it to design the algorithm. We start out by studying the robot and making a note of the ports that the sensors and motors are connected to. On my robot, the light sensor is connected to port 1. So go to the worksheet and circle port 1 for the light sensor. The right hand motor is connected to port A and the left hand motor is connected to port C. Circle port C for the left hand motor and port A for the right hand motor on the worksheet. Then go down to the section 2 of the worksheet and circle the sensors until the light sensor on port 1, so circle 1, sees black or reads less than 50%, turn right, so circle right, by stopping motor A, circle A, and running motor C, circle C. Turn right by stopping motor A and running motor C. Turn right by stopping the right hand motor and running the left hand motor. Now fill out the second part of the worksheet. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn left by stopping motor C and running motor A. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn left by stopping motor C and running motor A. Turn left by stopping the left hand motor and running the right hand motor. Then we repeat the process and the robot will crab its way along the left hand side of the line. Start a new program and save it with a good name. I'm going to call my program line follow one sensor. Now we're going to copy the pseudocode into the program as a comment. Click the comment bubble on the, pro on the, the NextG toolbar and type the first block of pseudocode. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%, turn right by stopping motor A and running motor C. Click on the screen to the right and enter the second block of pseudocode. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn left by stopping motor C and running motor A. Turn the comment tool off. Now we'll turn this pseudocode into real code that can execute on the robot. Let's reread this. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees black. 
the key word here is until. That implies we're waiting for something. So I think we'll use a wait block. Um, until the light sensor, we'll wait for light. Until the light sensor on port one, we'll change the light sensor to monitor port one. Until the light sensor on port one sees black or reads less than 50%. We'll change the um, uh, until threshold to be less than instead of greater than 50%. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%, turn right by stopping motor A. Okay, until light sensor 1. So we want to run, we want to stop motor A. We want to stop motor a, drop down a, uh, a move block, I'll clear the checkbox which controls motor B and C, set it to motor A and I'll set it to stop. By stopping motor A and running motor C. I need another move block, I'll drop that down, I'll set this to run motor C. Good. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees black, or reads less than 50%, port 1 sees black less than 50%, turn right by stopping motor A, motor A stop, and running motor C, motor C runs. Good. Now for the second part of the pseudocode, we need to turn into real computer code. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees white, or read greater than 50%, so that's another wait block, wait for light, uh, we change it to port 1, and when I drop the block down by default, it's already reading, already reading greater than 50%. Turn left by stopping motor C, that's a move block. Set it to motor C and set it to stop. And running motor A. Our last move block, drop that down, set it to run motor A, and it has to run it forward. Good, that's the second piece of the pseudocode. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn left by stopping motor C and running motor A. There's one final thing to do. We want this to follow the line continually, so we need to add all this code inside a loop block. So we drop down a loop block at the start of the sequence beam. And I'm going to hold down the shift key and click each of these blocks one at a time and then move them all inside the loop block. We're now ready to compile, download, run and test this program on the rescue course. Hmm, well that's not running particularly well. It appears to move forward and overshoot the line and then stop be doing that. Let's watch it again. Moves forward, overshoots the line, and then stops. Let's have a close look at the code. Alright. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%. Port 1 sees black, reads less than 50%. So I'm pretty confident that's correct. Turn right by stopping motor A. Stopping motor A, that's correct and running motor C. We're running motor C, it's running forward. We're, ah, we're running it for one full rotation. So what's happening here is that when the, co when the program execution reaches this block, it hangs until the motor has indeed run one full revolution or one full rotation. It doesn't check the light sensor while it's running full rotation, one full rotation. And of course, a full rotation actually moves the robot quite a distance. So, this full rotation is causing the robot to pass over the line where it sits on the white, observing white, waiting forever until it sees black. What we need to do is to change this from one full rotation to unlimited. You recall from previous work that unlimited doesn't actually mean run the motor unlimited. It means turn the motor on at this speed and move to the next block. So this I'm sure will solve the problem. 
We'll have to do the same thing, of course, to uh, motor A. Set that to unlimited as well. So now we'll compile, download, run, and see if this has fixed the problem. That's better. The robot's now hugging the line quite nicely. It's uh, negotiating the straight. It's coming into a sweeping bend here. It's getting around the sweeping bend quite comfortably. It's zigging and zagging quite a bit, however, moving from the left to the right. Um, probably travelling a bit further than it needs to. Let's have a close look at these wheels. Uh, that's interesting. They don't appear to be gripping the surface terribly well, do they? They're, uh, they're skidding. And uh, where there's a skid, there's inefficiency. So I'll have a quick uh, look at the program and see if we can improve that. All right, over here to the uh, to the move block. I noticed that the uh, the power we're applying to uh, the motor when it turns on is 75%. That's quite a lot, and that's likely to be causing the wheel to be spinning too fast to grip the surface. So let's have a shot at turning this down to let's say uh, 60%. We'll do the same thing to motor uh, A, and we will compile, download, run, and test that see how it looks. It's following the line. It's nice and accurate on the straight. It follows the left hand sweeping bend without any trouble. It negotiates the gentle zigzag without any trouble. It won't set any land speed records but it's accurate and it sticks to the line. In the next talk through we'll look at adding some of the more complicated tiles for the robot to follow. Good luck with implementing simple line following. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.